Hi, I'm Andrew and I'm with Baker's Gas. Uh, we're here today with the new multi Miller Multimatic 255. And uh, I have an accessory that you can purchase with this Multimatic 255. So Multimatic's been out for uh, a little while now and uh, it's gaining popularity. Um, you know, some of the biggest things, question people had were being an inverter style machine instead of a transformer style like the old 252. What's the longevity, the reliability? Um, is it gonna be worth a darn? Well. It's been proven itself out in the field uh, for about a year now, and it is a uh, workhorse that we're finding out. So from light fab to uh, light industrial stuff, uh, they've been in the field and they're, they're running great. But today, uh, I got the accessory, the TIG kit that you can purchase with this. So if you bought a Multimatic 255 or 235, this TIG kit is for the, those two machines. Uh, so. I'm gonna run through what this thing came with, and then we're gonna do a little TIG welding with it uh, at the end. So, to start out, this was the box. Uh, now this this particular item, accessory, is about $4.95, um, and it's just an accessory, and if uh, you're looking to get it, you can find it at bakersgas.com, and we'll link that all stuff below. But what it comes with, it has a TIG torch that it comes with, uh, which is a WP-17 series, air-cooled, and, it has a TIG kit inside the TIG torque package. Um, along with that, it comes with a foot pedal, and then it comes with a regulator and a five foot hose. So you can see I got it on, I got the machine powered up. I pushed the TIG button up at the top. I got my ground cable hooked up. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you guys was on the inside of this unit, around here. So, is this little pigtail. So it's a 14 pin pigtail. And it goes in right there. That's where your 14 pin connection's at. And I've got that threaded in. So what you do is you just feed it back through the front. And then you shut the machine up. And then this is where your foot pedal on the unit plugs in at. And then that's your amperage control for this unit. Now, you can do lift arc with this unit also. So you, can, you don't have to hook the foot pedal up. So lift arc is where you touch the tongues into the workpiece, pull up, and it initiates the arc. Or you can use a foot pedal, and uh, you have a remote amperage control with the foot pedal. So let's uh, get my TIG torch plugged in, get my ground. I got a little piece of weldment we're gonna weld together, um, and we'll go from there. So we got the TIG torch out. Um, as you can see, it's got a just a regular covering on that uh, the cable line, that, or the copper line running the power cable on this TIG torch. You can buy an accessory that uh, is a cover for these TIG torches. We'll link that below too, but. So I'm gonna get this TIG torch hooked up. Let's see, hold on one second. We're gonna be ground positive because we're gonna be running DC electromagative. So we're hooked up there, got our ground cable. Um, one thing you do gotta do is hook the gas port in the front of the machine for the TIG. Now on the back side of the machine, there's two, two gas hookups on that. Uh, one for MIG, one for TIG. We got it in the TIG. One thing I wanted to mention too, um, not necessarily a downside to this machine, but it does not have high freak start. So it is a lift arc constantly, but with the remote amperage control with the foot pedal, we can adjust our amperage with our foot while we're welding. But we still have to use the lift arc function because it does not have high freak. And if anybody out there wants to know, you can hook a wireless remote foot pedal to this unit. Um, so with the 14 pin connection here, your wireless remote and I've seen them do it before. They'll hook onto that, and then what they do is they flop that cord back inside this unit so it's not dangling outside, and then you can have a wireless foot pedal for this unit also. Pretty neat. Um, those run close to 800 bucks, so it's a pricey, pricey object, but very convenient when you do need one. So we got that hooked up. Throw that one on the other side here. And then, so we got our gas, we're hooked up correctly on that. We got 110 amps. Now this unit will go to 275 amps and that's at a 60% duty cycle. So this little guy made really quite a bit of output, uh, 275 amps. Now, is that torch rated for it? No, but short times, short periods of time at that high amperage, it would be okay. But it's just an air-cooled torch. So we got to remember that. 
this torch is limited to how much amperage we can push through it. So I'm just going to run it. We're going to turn it down here to. We're going to try it out at 75. We got some 14 gauge material. We're going to run it on and uh, give it a shot here. So one feature on this unit um, that we we need to talk about here is the auto set feature. So yeah, we have an Intig. So if we push auto set, boom, this thing got, has auto set. So it's giving us a recommended amperage. And what do we have? We have remote enabled. We can disable it. And that's your foot pedal. We're going to enable the remote. We're going to choose our diameter of our tungsten. So we're going to run 332nd. And then we're, it has a material thickness gauge here. The notice it's changing the amperage as I go up. And now what did I have? I said we had 14 gauge material and that was at 75 amps. So um, that was pretty darn close according to the auto set. Um, then as we go up, we'll, we'll go up to 3 eighths material, 255 amps with a 3 32nd tungsten. We'll come back down 14 gauge and we'll give the auto set a try too. Now I'm, you can shut that off. You don't need to use auto set. It's just a nice feature to have because you plug it in and it tells you a recommended setting. Now, when you're in the auto set, you can go outside those bounds too. It just gives you a target amperage to be to use if that material is being used. So we're going to give this a shot and uh, try that out. All right, so we got the machine on auto set. We're at 75 amps on the unit. I got my piece here. Um, we're just going to give it a shot here and see how it TIG welds. So, not too bad if you check that out. Now, this is just a little piece um, and tube to plate, um, but getting it started, that's where the trick's at. And what you wanna do, see without the, with the remote on, I got no power, right? And as soon as I hit that remote, the foot pedal, we're gonna get power to the tungsten. But what you wanna do is come down real light and just touch, and then if you just lift off. You can do like a little bit of a scratching motion um, sometimes your tungsten will stick though if you do that. So if you just come down touch and then lift off, uh, you should initiate the arc. Pretty sweet. Uh, not a bad little unit now. That torch, I know we didn't run very long. It wasn't a long weld, but it warmed that torch up pretty good. But remember, that's just an air-cooled unit. Um, but other than that, that's a, I like that. I like that little setup. So what we're going to do here, um, we're going to go to pulse. We're going to try a pulse setting on this. So we're going to hit pulse so pulses per second um, let's just see what it goes up to okay 200 pulses per second or where we really see it a uh, dramatic is and we're, we're gonna do it we're gonna try you'll be able to see it hear it we we'll try five pulses per second and we're gonna give me a hundred amps on that just get kick it up a little bit Now, as you can see, when I wrap my torch around, um, I put it around my shoulder. So what happens is when you're doing like this, you get, it's pulling on your, on your wrist and you're constantly wanting to pull it back. So what I do is I just loop it and uh, have it sit on this shoulder and then, I, then this side's kind of free. Now you want to be careful doing that if you've got a torn uh, sheath or anything because there is current flowing through that thing so just got to be aware of what you got going on so let's give this pulse try
So that pulse setting, we need a little bit more amperage on that. Um, what we got here? 125. We're gonna go down. So you notice that five pulses per second. It's kind of a an annoying uh, light, and it it's hard to look at, believe it or not, through that that helmet. But let's give that two pulses a second a shot here. wasn't too bad stuck my rod there a little bit but other than that welded pretty nice um it's pretty pretty cool so two pulses a second you can almost time your your motion of dabbing and going or if you do pull one pulse a second um it's a little bit slower but you can dab at each pulse because that's when you're getting your higher current and you just move along so pretty neat this unit's pretty sweet for um, now what would you want to do pulse in? Uh, you see a lot in stainless and thinner material because it's better for heat distortion. Um, some people like it, like I was telling you, one pulse per second, it, it times your dabbing motion so when you're dabbing you can uh, time it like that. Kind of a neat feature to have. Um, all in all this machine with this TIG kit that, come, that you can get with this machine, I mean it's ready for setup. The only thing you need is gas. So like I say, it comes with tungsten. You need gas and you need filler material. Um, we're gonna have a bundle package below though that has all that stuff along with the accessory kit. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to ask them. Uh, we'll do our best to answer them and stay tuned for more videos and thanks again for watching.